Now, I had someone ask me why I don't throw off the hump. Um, and for those of you who don't know, throwing off the hump is where you center a larger ball of clay and then you take the top portion of the clay and throw from that and then wire off that, take a piece off the top and then throw again from the ball of clay. So you'd center a big mass of clay and then throw multiple pieces from it so you don't need to recenter clay for each one. Um, why don't I do that versus why do I throw on bats? And the reason for that is that um, I like to throw thin and with minimal trimming, um, which you can't do when throwing off the hump and keep your pieces round because you've got to lift them off. So there has to be something that you can pick the wet clay up from. So normally you'd leave an extra thickness at the base, um, which then needs to be trimmed off. Um, so my personal take on it is that any time you save in throwing, you lose in trimming and reclaiming the clay. Uh, but I've never checked to see how much clay I do actually lose, you lose from trimming. So I think that's be quite an interesting thing to kind of be able to look at numerically. Um, and I don't intend to start throwing from the hump as a comparison, but people who do throw off the hump could chime in with their numbers. So I'm going to go about this in a slightly, um, I'm going to work through the process in the wrong order because that's the order in which the pieces are dry and I'm not following a piece from start to finish um, just because I've got a bunch of pieces, a bunch of the same piece uh, at different stages. So I've got mugs ready to trim and then I have some which aren't quite dry enough to wire off the bat but should be in about an hour or so. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to weigh this one see how much I lose from trimming and then weigh that one to see how much I lose when trimming and wiring off the bat um, and then because they will start with 350 grams they should be pretty comparable at each stage so I should have something to write this down but this is 277.4 so I will run through the trimming quickly and then we'll see how much the weight drops using I've got uh, a batch of diamond core tools sent me a full set of their trimming tools and there are some well I mean they're all really nice there's a bunch of interesting shapes really like the sawtooth one it's great for in fact I'll show you that trimming the rim of mugs in a little bit because it's so sharp and rounded you can get right inside the mug where something like that to get a cutting surface inside the mug would be really quite tricky that one cuts really neatly down I love that one and then there are some kind of more interesting shapes like that which are great for trimming uh, in the inside of holes and um, one of those which you can actually cut a neat edge on the inside of planter holes with. But they do some really interesting ones, but then the, the kind of the standard shapes as well, which are I've been using a lot of. And the they've added um, little, like the, sh the bottom of each one shaped differently. So you can do different things with them, which some of them have proved really useful. Some of them I don't know quite what you'd use them for, but when you find a use for it, you, they're incredibly useful and they're just kind of a free, Thing on the back of the tool, so you buy it for the trimming tool, um, and yeah, just to hand, you have a, a, a useful shaping tool as well. What I do when I'm trimming these is I take the corner off the outside, I trim across the inside and define a foot ring. But I'm really just looking to come down a millimetre or so across the main body of the piece. Um, I throw more or less to the finished thickness um, so I open up all the way down to the base and then all I want is enough of a foot ring that it sits on the outer edge. I don't want a really tall foot ring because um, I find they're very annoying in dishwashers when the, the base fills up with water and you get an otherwise dry mug out that's got a little puddle on top. So my personal preference is for a very minor foot ring, enough that it 
sits flat, but not so much that it has water pouring up in it. Uh, zine ball modelling tools, absolutely love these for shaping and defining the foot, and then add a swell across the middle. And then I've got this really soft rubber rib that I can't seem to buy anywhere else. Um, and this one's getting a bit worn out, so I'm really hoping they come back in stock at some point and um, I can buy another one before this one actually falls apart. But it's just a bit softer than anything else I've found. So, that is how I trim the base of my pieces. And the final weight after that is... 264.2. Now I think I said 277.4 before. So if that's right, it's 13.3, uh, 13.2 grams off, which would be approximately 5%. So I've trimmed 5% of the weight away um, at this stage. And I'd imagine I'd probably lose a little less than that wiring off, but maybe leave a bit quite a lot behind on the back so it'll be interesting to see so maybe well I mean we'll, we'll jump ahead in time and see that now for this part I'm going to trim and wire off a piece and see how much weight it loses so the easiest way to do this is just to weigh the, weigh the piece on the bat and then we'll do that again in a minute that's what I do so this is 407.4 407.4 All I do when trimming pieces off is I put swell in the base, get rid of any excess clay towards the bottom, just, just leave a very small amount to trim there, and then I neaten up the rim, just where the shark's tooth diamond core tools, the T9 trimmer, if you want one of these. Um, Just trim a little away. Is that right? It means you don't have to try and get a perfect rim as you throw it. Um, so you can leave a bit more clay there and trim it back makes the piece more robust rather than having a very thin thrown rim. And just smooth over any join between the trimmed part and the untrimmed part. Uh, and that'll do. So that's what I do for these and Double check, but I think I said 407.4. So the weight now, oh, no, don't need to zero that. The weight now is uh, 393 dead. So what did I say? 407.4. So 14.4 grams lost at this stage. I think that makes it about 10% overall. So the piece at this stage is 288, well, 289 grams. So yeah, roughly 10% lost. And the, the point this whole video is getting at is I'd be amazed if you could get away with that with um, a piece thrown off the hump. I would have thought you'd need to trim away more clay than that, but it'd be really interesting to see actually. I might have to ask some potters that do that to, to do their before and afters and find out what the comparison is. Right, I thought I might as well 
uh, grab a piece from my rigid part and smash it uh, so you show you the cross section. This isn't quite as good as I would be aiming for but this is broadly speaking about right. So I'd be aiming for about 4mm through the base and you get that little um, kick for the foot ring and then 4mm and then fairly even up and taper for the rim which is where I trim it off. So this is a little thicker, but then this is a rejected piece. That is, broadly speaking, how the cross-section of my pieces would look, uh, but a fraction thinner.